Let's speak to the reader on astrophysics. He's also the, the, the director of the Kiel Observatory at Kiel University in the UK. He is Jaco van Loon. Jaco, welcome to the program. I'm guessing that you're more excited about the asteroid samples because previously humanity in the Apollo missions, they brought back samples from the moon. Um, well, yes and no. Um, but um, the, the samples that are being brought back from the moon now are being brought back from a different type of terrain. And so we are hoping to learn a little bit more um, about what has happened to the moon uh, since its formation. Uh, it's much younger material. And um, knowing more about what has happened uh, to the moon in the first billion year will hopefully also tell us a little bit about what has happened um, to the Earth. Uh, but yes, the asteroids, of course, um, are themselves uh, probably building blocks of Earth-like planets. And so having uh, some of the material from underneath the surface will tell us um, you know, what was brought to the Earth when the Earth was being formed. Um, previously, some, some material from the surface was brought back, uh, but the surface is being uh, changed by radiation, for instance, and, and little impacts. So getting something from underneath the surface is very important. Why is it going to take years of investigation to find out what uh, people like you and the Japanese scientists who are conducting all of the investigations to reach their conclusions. What are the building blocks that they're looking for and are they that difficult to find? Um, well, first they will be looking at uh, the water content um, because it's still uh, a question where does the water on Earth come from? Um, and um, uh, in recent years, uh, we have found out that uh, asteroids contain actually probably a lot of water. Um, so they will be looking at that and also the isotopic composition of that water. Um, but besides that, of course, they would be interesting, uh, interested also to find uh, organic material and possibly building blocks of, of life. Uh, they can contain um, uh, amino assets, for instance, things that uh, have been found on, on comets. Um, and this, of course, uh, needs to be done very carefully. Uh, first of all, um, you don't want to contaminate the sample, so everything has to be done extremely carefully. You just don't uh, unpack and you know, uh, take the, the rock in your hand to, to a laboratory. So that, that's why things take a little bit longer. Um, plus, uh, although these, these samples are quite small, we're, we're dealing with quite a lot of material to investigate. And so this will be done in many different ways, and that, that just takes time. Uh, Jaco, I've got a cracker of a question I want to end this interview with, so be briefer if you don't mind with this one. You said that there were uh, issues about what's been happening to the moon over the past however long. I think you might have said a million years or something. What are the big questions you want answered about what's been happening to the moon over the past millennia? Well, first of all, also recently, you know, it's been found that uh, the, the moon too contains um, probably quite a lot of water. So uh, where is the water? Is it uh, underneath the surface? And uh, the Changi uh, five has dug a little bit under the surface, so it's brought back a little bit of material from underneath the surface, and we're going to see wh what the water content is there. Okay, thank you for giving me the opportunity. So in the office, we've been talking about alien life, and I know that previously, if we had asked questions about aliens to an eminent scientist like you, it could be a career-threatening moment, but I think we've moved on. Humanity has moved on a lot. Science has proven a lot. So if it's true that an asteroid or a meteorite or whatever kind of foreign object would have brought the building blocks of life to our planet, do you believe that mathematically the mixture of gases and minerals and everything that make up life on Earth could be or might be repeated somewhere else in our universe? In other words, do you believe in alien life? Yes, so um, we, we know that uh, the building blocks uh, for biotic material are um, found in space. So um, that's not the question. The question is how you, can you bring it all together to make something alive? And this, this is still a great mystery. Um, but at least until now, we, we can find out um, you know, whether it is likely that these building blocks uh, come together under the right conditions to make something interesting happening. And we know now that there will be many places elsewhere in the universe where we find uh, planet surfaces like the Earth was like uh, four and a half billion years ago. So um, it is very likely that uh, life will have started elsewhere. It's not clear, of course, how this will have developed since then. Because if you start with very simple life to get something like you and me, uh, you know, it, takes a, it takes a few more steps. Yes, absolutely. Jakob van Loon, always a pleasure to have you on, Jakob. Take care. Thanks so much indeed for spending time with us. <laughs>